return for the innocent blood spilled on the streets of Belfast. And by God, you've got Pierce your blood, Mr. Nixon. Mrs. Pierce is making a political Nixon. speech. This is you've outrageous. You've got the blood of Giuseppe Conte. You've got the lifeblood of Carol Richardson. And you've got 15 Mrs. years Pierce, of blood and sweat and pain from my client, whose only crime was it wasn't Silence he was, he was bloody well fire. Irish. And he was foolish and he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mrs. And that's when I get all upset over some trivial little thing at home. You know, I have a temper, Mr. Stevens, don't you? Yes, I do, I'm sorry to say. But each time I realise my rightful place is with my husband. After all, there's no turning the clock back now. I can't be forever dwelling on what might have been. Don't you agree, Mr. Stevens? How can I answer that if you got the nerve to ask me? I mean, you've got a lot of nerve asking me a question like that. Did you ask the Beatles that? Do I, or Mr. Eve of Destruction? Yeah, did you ask Barry McGuire that? No, I have to ask because you have the nerve to question whether I can. No, I'm not questioning you because I don't expect any answers from you. Maybe Victor Mature. He looks like Victor Mature. No, more like Elsa Lanchester, man, with a North Mexican kind of thing. It was very protesty, man. It was very, very protesty. Tell Philip, I fear neither him, nor his priests, nor his armies. Tell him if he wants to shake his little fist at us, we're ready to give him such a bite he'll wish he'd kept his hands in his pockets. Happy birthday. Morning, honey. Oh, Dan. Roses on your own birthday. You too much, really. Well, he'll eat it now that you're here. It's your birthday. You shouldn't be out buying me flowers. Well, you were still sleeping. So? Well, we decided it would be better if we let you sleep in a little, didn't we? Good morning, bug. I swear to you, whatever Mona Lauder saw or thought she saw was entirely a figment of that woman's hateful imagination. Yes, I have spoken to Raymond Deegan on occasion. He brought his little girl to Eleanor's art show, but, but apparently, even here in Hartford, the idea of a white woman even speaking to a colored man... Oh, please, just save man. me the Negro you, rights! You know what that woman is capable of! Don't you ever talk to your goddamn mother like that? We never said that. That may have been your assumption, but we never expressly said that. We did say it. When did we say it? I don't know when we said it, but we said it. I thought... We said it at the time on the phone. Honey, let me finish. Sorry, I keep saying that. I thought that if Henry was happy here and my show continued, that we might do LA for a while. I was not privy to that thought process. Oh, the only reason we didn't live here is because you can't imagine desires other than your own, unless they're forced on you. Okay.
While I was laid up with broken bones, she rifled through my desk, found my memo outlining a Trask radio acquisition, and has been passing it off as her idea. It was my idea. She stole it from me, I swear. Good God, Tess, don't you know when to stop? Are you responsible for kidnapping this animal? How dare you break into if my I private property? If I ever see you or your meat wagon again, you'll be lucky if you don't end up in a wooden box.